Hello and welcome to video number two, Product Vendor Checklist. We're going to talk about what you need and what decisions you need to make. So why gather it now? Make sure to jot all these down as you're going to need it when you set up the product. And it's better to know what you need and what kind of decisions you need to make beforehand so you don't stop, pause, and forget. My goal is to get your product onto JVZoo, but you have to do it yourself. So I've created this video course as easy as possible so that you're going to be able to do that. So let's talk about product files. I talked briefly about this earlier. You're going to need, of course, a sales page, a thank you page, content files, whatever that might be, videos, PDFs, uh, reports, ebooks, and so forth. You're going to need those in hand. Now let's talk about the checklist. You're going to need to know the launch date and the time. Now when you set up your product onto JVZoo, you can set it up to go live at any given date. So if you have a launch date and launch time, make sure you specify this. Now for example, if you're going to put your product into the marketplace and you want it to launch at a certain date and time then this would actually be a good option for you. So if you were to make it live today and you don't want to put it into the marketplace until 10 days later, then you want to specify the launch date and time. You're also going to need the product name. That's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to need to know the currency in your country that you want to be charging. You want to know the product price. If you're going to be using dime cells, then you this product price will be the maximum price. So if you're going to do dime cells and the maximum that you wanted the product price to be was, let's say, $17, and you start the dime cell at a dollar, then every time somebody buys, it's going to up itself until it hits $17. So that would be the product price. And this is the same with recurring products one-time products and so forth commission percentage for affiliate program is basically what do you want to give people in terms of the percentage for your affiliate program so if I sell your product and your product is a hundred dollars and you give 50 percent then I get fifty dollars if it's 75 percent then I get seventy five dollars so that's the commission in relation to the affiliate program and obviously, if you don't have an affiliate program, then you won't need to specify this. But it would, in fact, not be very wise not to add an affiliate program. Now, if your product is a subscription, then you can listen to this. Otherwise, you can fast forward to the next slide. So if you're charging, let's say, $17 a month, or you have a high ticket product that, let's say, is $497, or let's say $1,000, and you can break it up into different payments. Let's say you know that for a fact somebody's not going to pay $1,000 up front, but if they could afford it, they would pay $100 or $200 a month. That would be an option there. So if you go this route, this is an option. So it applies to recurring products and payments for high ticket items or low ticket items if your audience are unable to pay a certain amount. Then you're going to need to know the payment period for X amount of months. So let's say, for example, your membership site was six months. So if it's six months, the number of payments in those six months, and then, of course, how much your affiliate gets on that first payment. Then the question that you need to ask yourself is for your monthly, weekly, or quarterly recurring subscription, do you want to offer a trial? If you want to offer a trial, let's say for seven days, it's a dollar. If that's the case, then the to total price would be a dollar for seven days. And of course, you have the commission payout on the trial payment 
and you can put the percentage right there. Then you'll want to know the quantity. If you're dealing with intangible products, then you may not need a quantity. But let's say, for example, that you're only offering 50 copies of that one specific product, then you can put quantity there. You want to put your support email. In other words, if people want to contact you, and this is very important because if people can't contact you, then a lot of other issues will arise. So make sure you got a email address for support and a support URL. So obviously support email is definitely a requirement. A support URL would be something like if you have a help desk. And of course you're going to need to have some sort of landing page, which is an option. You don't have to have a sales funnel squeeze page, pre-launch page, but that is an option if you want to do that. Otherwise, if you leave that blank, it'll default to the sales page URL. And of course, if your sales page is on the warriorform.com as a warrior special offer, warrior form tends to go down or lags a lot. So if it your your site, your website, your sales page lags, then you're going to lose sales. So if it is on the warrior form, then you can also include a optional sales page, which is a really, really cool feature. You're also going to need to specify the delivery method. You have two choices in this case. You can either upload your files to JVZoo if your product is small in size, or you can have your own thank you page. In this specific video course, I'm going to assume that you're going to go the route of having a thank you page because if you go the route of uploading your files to JVZoo then that's an option as well and also you need to specify whether you want to make your product eligible for product of the day I don't see why not that could mean more sales to you so definitely want to check that box if you do want to make a dime sale, and of course, if you don't, you can always fast forward to the next slide. But if you want to make a dime sale, which basically means that you start out a lower price and then every time somebody buys, it increases a certain amount until it, hit, it hits a maximum price. So you're going to need to know the starting price. You're going to need to know how much it increases by for every sale. So if the start price is at a dollar and the end price is at fifty dollars and I could do something like it increases ten cents or even five cents for every three sales or for every one sale and that's all you need to know so what I would recommend that you go ahead and do is to jot down everything make all the decisions in advance so that when we begin to set it up on JVZoo you're ready to go and this will not be any roadblock whatsoever and this will definitely help you get it on to the JVZoo platform immediately. So with that said, let's move on to video number three and begin to map out your sales funnel.